so much, Charlie, for uh, inviting us to, uh, to share and talk about Travel Manitoba. We've put up a picture of the two of us. I'm uh, Melanie Swinarczyk. I'm Senior Business Development Manager with Travel Manitoba. I'm on, uh, on the left as you're looking at the screen with the dark hair. And some of you who may be online might have met um, my colleague Cindy, who I'll let introduce herself. Hi, I'm Cindy Parrott. I'm the International uh, Marketing Specialist for Travel Manitoba and uh, have been with the company for about nine years and perhaps have met you at Corroboree or uh, Rendezvous Canada, so it's a pleasure to have you online. So we're certainly uh, excited to be here and to spend uh, the next uh, 45 minutes or so uh, together. We're going to uh, take you through um, a bit of a presentation on uh, Manitoba and some of our uh, unique uh, aspects and experiences uh, that we have to offer. And we'll certainly leave some time at the, uh, at, uh, the end of the presentation for some questions. And we'll make sure that we follow up um, in an email to, to all of you on, uh, on, with some video as well as some images and some, uh, some follow-up uh, material um, to go. So I'll let uh, Cindy kick us off and give you a little bit of intro to Manitoba. So Manitoba is located uh, geographically in the center of North America. Uh, we are bordered by Saskatchewan and Ontario and North Dakota and Minnesota. Um, some gateway cities into Canada, uh, um, into Winnipeg, pardon me, are Vancouver, uh, Calgary, Toronto, and Montreal. These all have um, direct Canadian uh, flights into Manitoba. Uh, and we also have some direct flights from the U.S. to Winnipeg. There's Chicago, Minneapolis, Denver, and Phoenix. Some Manitoba stats to share with you. The area of Manitoba is about 250,000 square miles. Uh, we have a population of 1.3 million within the province of Manitoba, and 780,000 of that population lives in the city limits of Winnipeg. We are a flat rolling prairie um, in the south and west of the province, um, and that's where the majority of the population lives. On the eastern side of the province, we have Precambrian Shield, which uh, is a lot of rocks and lakes and rivers. And as you can see on the map, um, in the blue here, we have a lot of bodies of water. We have over 100,000 lakes within Manitoba. So it's, uh, it's my uh, chance just to share a little bit about uh, Manitoba and some of our experiences. Um, we, have, we have some incredible experiences in Manitoba. We really liken our experiences to bucket list um, opportunities folks that might have done African safaris or they may have been to the Galapagos. This, um, some of our experiences in northern Manitoba, in particular up in Churchill, really give folks an opportunity to get up close and personal uh, with polar bears, with beluga whales, um, experiences that you wouldn't be able to do anywhere else in the world. Um, in the, the lower uh, left-hand corner is our incredible um, newest um, attraction in Winnipeg is the uh, Canadian Museum for Human Rights with the Northern Lights in the background. And then our incredible um, waterways and lakes give us fishing across all the seasons. What I, what I thought I'd start with is just um, take you through a little bit about uh, uh, Churchill, Manitoba. So Churchill itself is a, is a really, it's a tiny frontier town. The year-round population is only um, a little over 900. Um, it's about a thousand kilometers north of Winnipeg, and the only way to get there at the moment is by air. Um, we do have a railway that services Ch um, Churchill um, as well, but um, earlier um, this year in May, we experienced some significant spring flooding after, after a couple of crazy um, three, four day winter storms and blizzards. And, uh, the spring flooding and the amount of water actually washed away the railways. So previously, um, you could get up to Churchill, um, which is located on the Hudson Bay, by plane or by air. Um, at the moment, it's only air, and we're really hoping that um, um, 
our government and the company that are um, looking after the railways um, really get into gear pretty soon because this, uh, this community is really pretty isolated at the moment. It is famous for being the polar bear and beluga whale um, capital uh, of the world. And um, it has a couple of um, set seasons. Um, Churchill itself, um, as a tourist destination, really opens for business in the months of, the, of July. Um, the summer months are really July and August. There are approximately 60,000 beluga whales that, um, that migrate in the rivers, and these belugas come into the Hudson's Bay and the, um, the Churchill River or the Seal River to carve and um, have their babies. So at, um, at any time, it's not a case of am I going to see beluga whales, it's really a case of how many belugas um, you're going to see. With 60,000 of them, they're, they're really incredible. Um, the guests um, have an opportunity to go out on beluga watching tours. They can um, kayak either in a single or a double kayak. Um, they can snorkel, and by snorkeling, we're putting you into the into the water wearing a dry suit because it's it's that cold um, in the bay and in the river. And you get the opportunity to swim with the belugas. They're super curious, and they're going to come up and and nudge you and sing to you and chatter back to you and really create um, an, an amazing life-altering experience. Um, additionally, in the summer months, uh, Manitoba has hundreds of species of birds, um, migratory birds, as well as birds that can really only be found in that region. Incredible um, carpet of wildflower, wildflowers, lichen and berries. Um, our guests can pick berries from cranberries, cloudberries, um, blackberries, blueberries, and a lot of the berries are used in um, the culinary experiences that um, they would partake in up, up north. Um, as well, um, hiking, there are a couple of national historic sites um, for, um, to explore that includes the, the Prince of Wales Fort, um, which was an, an actual um, operational fort back in the day with with cannons and, and guests can explore literally how people lived in those days. And um, not to forget that it's absolutely possible to see uh, polar bears in the summer months. Um, once the bay melts, the bears, the bears come on shore and they do what they call a walking hibernation where they're actually walking the coastline of the Hudson Bay waiting for that bay to freeze again. So some of the um, photographic experiences um, that we'll share with you now um, Beluga is in the, in the top left. The Ithaca is a shipwreck, and this, um, it looks like it's shipwrecked, um, you know, it ran aground um, on the rocks, but really this is a tidal zone, and um, in, the, in high tide you can't actually walk out to the shipwreck. In low tide you can explore the shipwreck, but high tide you're dealing with um, an additional six feet of water above that rock bed. Um, kayaking on, on the bottom left is, is a really one of my favorites. The belugas will come right up, and if you put your hand in the water, they're nudging you and, and touching your hands, as well as the bears. This, um, this um, photograph is taken um, from uh, Lazy Bear Expedition's um, Hudson's Bay Coastal Tour. They have the exclusive use of a boat called the Sam Hearn, and they will go out for day tours um, in the bay and on the Hudson's River to past Eskimo Point, um, where you will um, undertake beluga watching um, as well as polar bear viewing opportunities. Um, some shots of um, polar bears in summer. Again, we really want to dispel the myth that you can only see bears in October and November. Uh, for sure, um, the bears are there. Um, I, I absolutely love this photograph. This uh, polar bear is uh, photographed in fireweed, and fireweed is a local wildflower. It only blooms two weeks of the year. So um, for folks coming up there, um, the last week of July, first two weeks of October, is going to give you this pink carpet of, of flowers. I'm going to let uh, Cindy uh, chat you through um, a change in season and, uh, and share a little bit about uh, the colder months. Um, so we do have polar bear season, which uh, is in October and November. Um, around 80% of the visitors 
to Churchill will happen in this six week uh, window of opportunity, um, probably something that you're all very familiar with. Um, basically during this time, during the six weeks, it's all Paola Barras all the time. Um, it is the most accessible and healthiest population of polar bears in the world. Um, there's anywhere from 900 to 1,000 bears in this area. And the reason that the bears are in Churchill is that Churchill is on their migratory path. So they gather in this area because they know it's the first place on the Hudson's Bay to freeze so that they can get out back onto the ice to go and hunt the seals. Um, once they have come off the ice, they uh, technically do not eat um, until they get back onto the ice once it's frozen. Um, some of the other incredible wildlife that you can see up in Churchill during the, uh, the fall is Arctic hare, uh, fox, wolves, moose, and caribou. Um, some other, some ways to view the polar bears, uh, as you can see in the top two pictures, are via these tundra vehicles. Um, Frontiers North and Lazy Bear Expeditions offer polar bear viewing experiences on these tundra vehicles where they will take you out on, uh, for the day out onto the tundra. And in these bottom two pictures, uh, another opportunity of viewing the bears is with Churchill Wild, where you can do walking polar bear safaris. Um, it is a very safe experience, um, but you do get very up close and personal uh, with, with the bears. Um, and Churchill Wild is a fly-in lodge that is um, located just a little further north um, from Churchill. So you do get on a, a chartered aircraft to fly to the lodge to do these experiences. Uh, so this picture indicates an experience with Churchill Wild of walking with the polar bears. Um, you can see that you, it looks like you're very close to the bears, but in fact you are quite a distance away and you are very safe. Um, and then these particular pictures are taken uh, up in Churchill where to give you an idea where you can get up close and personal with the bears on the tundra vehicles as well, where you are very safe. Um, the bears are very curious creatures, so they will come up to the tundra vehicles. Um, they feel like you are the one that is on display, so they come to check you out and see, uh, see what you're all about out on the tundra and what you're doing there. As mentioned, some of the other Arctic wildlife that you can see uh, up in Churchill, um, in the top left-hand corner is an Arctic hare where it's completely white, and in the bottom right-hand corner is an Arctic hare as well prior to changing its color. Um, in the middle, we have a picture of a mink, and on the right-hand side, um, which is kind of hard to see because it's very camouflaged, is actually a ptarmigan. And uh, in the bottom there on the left hand, as well as the middle, you'll see an Arctic fox. And these fox actually interact um, quite regularly with the bears. Uh, and they are all, uh, all friends on the tundra. Um, as mentioned, you do also have the opportunity of seeing wolves, moose, and caribou. It's uh, Melanie again, and I'm gonna jump into um, a little chat about um, one of my favorite times up in Churchill, and um, yes, it's winter and it's really cold in February, March, and April, but it's also the, the, the season with the most incredible northern lights. Um, Churchill is located um, literally directly under the Aurora Oval, so it means that we have northern lights activity, oh, up to 300 nights a year. Um, the long winter nights, though, and the very cold temperatures mean a higher likelihood for clear skies, and that's why you have such intense northern lights in the, in the winter months. But you can really see northern lights um, any time of the year. Um, the only requirement is a clear sky. Um, it's just the intensity that's gonna change. So in the summer months, it might be darker at one, two in the morning. In the winter months, it's getting dark as early as four, five in the afternoon, and the lights could be out all night and um, stay out until early the next morning. Um, so February to April um, is an incredible chance to see uh, to see these northern lights. 
The, the picture on the right-hand side is um, a picture from a culinary experience that is very new to the Churchill area. Frontiers North have partnered with um, a local Winnipeg restaurant called Deer and Almond, and they've created an, a, a culinary experience called uh, Raw. And up in uh, Churchill, they're calling it Raw Churchill. And you're basically going across the tundra in a tundra buggy um, to the Prince of Wales fort. And within the, the, within the grounds of the fort, they've set up this um, restaurant or pop-up restaurant. It's been February and March. It's freezing cold outside. It's like minus 30, minus 40 um, temperature in Celsius. Um, but the, the roof of the restaurant, it, it's actually made um, – it's completely transparent, and you're having a five-course meal dining underneath the northern lights. So again, a real bucket list experience. The picture on the left is um, from one of Churchill Wilde's camps, and again, you're, um, you're out, and there's no uh, mountains. Again, as Cindy mentioned, we're such a flat province, there's no mountains to block the view, so the northern lights are, are dining, oh, not dining, or dancing um, all around you. Some other northern Manitoba experiences um, in, the, in the winter and fall months is uh, dog sledding. In the summer months, your guests can, do, um, can go out on, with the dogs, but they're on carts as opposed to um, the sleds. Um, picture on the right is the Aurora Domes, which is um, operated by a local Churchill hotel. And again, that's transparent domes, and you're outstanding, and it's heated, and you're, you're nice and cozy, but you've got the lights right above you and then uh, snowshoeing on, on the bottom corner. A couple of the uh, Churchill operators, which I'm hoping most of you are familiar with, um, Frontiers North Adventures, who have been to Australia many times, heavily invested in the Australian market. Um, Lazy Bear Expeditions, Lazy Bear oper uh, operates a lodge within Churchill, hand-built by the owner um, of Lazy Bear. Um, Churchill Wild, uh, part of Nat Geo's Unique Lodges of the World program, and, uh, and Great White Bear, which uh, also offers tundra vehicle um, excursions. Some other experiences we'd like to talk about are um, in the city of Winnipeg, which is the capital of Manitoba. Um, what you'll see on your screen is a nether pop-up restaurant, as Melanie mentioned, it's a Winnipeg culinary experience. It's called uh, Raw Almond, and it takes place in February. Um, this is where they pop up the restaurant on the frozen Red River um, by the Forks National Historic Site, and they, uh, they create quite a culinary experience for you. It's a five-course meal, um, and they offer two seatings per, per night. Uh, the other one is the Canadian Museum for Human Rights, again at the Forks National Historic Site. This particular uh, museum is fairly new to the city. Um, it offers 11 different galleries in the building. Um, architecturally, it is phenomenal. It is completely stunning. The tower there that you see, you can go up uh, the tower and get a 360-degree view of the city itself. And uh, it really is a, a life-altering experience to go to the museum. Then there's also the uh, Journey to Churchill exhibit at the Assiniboine Park Zoo. This particular exhibit takes you on a walkthrough of what you could expect to see while you are in Churchill. Um, it's mimicked very close to the town site of Churchill itself. And this particular picture is taken in the underwater sea ice passage. So this is where you can actually see the bears swimming overhead uh, while you're walking through the tunnel. Another attraction in, uh, in Manitoba is our uh, Manitoba Museum. This is our museum that is dedicated to uh, the natural history of the province. Uh, several different galleries, including Arctic galleries. Um, it also houses the uh, Hudson's Bay Collection, which uh, again refers back to the history um, up north in Manitoba with the original fur traders and the English and fighting for both occupation as well as uh, um, you know the, uh, the fur trading rights in the, within, the, within the province. 
Um, and they have um, a variety of programs as well as um, different galleries and a planetarium. They also have a dinosaur exhibit at the moment. Um, Fort White Alive is um, an incredible um, location within our city boundaries. It is um, many thousands of hectares of um, uh, grasslands, prairie lands. They have um, uh, a, one of our Canadian signature experiences. They do house that called the Prairie Legacy, which talks about um, you know, the province and the history of the province. And um, they do have a bison um, herd, which you can get up close to and experience some of their animals. Um, One of the other uh, popular activities to do in Manitoba is fishing because we have over 100,000 lakes and we have so many bodies of water. Fishing is very prominent in our province. Um, we have a number of fly-in fishing lodges as well as drive-to fishing lodges. Um, in the left-hand corner, you can also see folks who are ice fishing. Um, so we certainly embrace our uh, temperatures and our seasons, so it is a year-round activity that we do do in the province. And in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see a picture of this fish um, that doesn't look very pleasant. It's called a catfish, but is uh, a really phenomenal to catch. It really puts up a fight um, and is really exciting to actually catch a, catch a catfish. Um, over to you, Mel. Some of our uh, road trip experiences, so um, taking you from the, from the north and outside of Winnipeg, uh, Riding Mountain National Park is approximately three and a half hours um, to the west of Winnipeg. Um, absolutely uh, an incredible park for camping, for hiking, um, canoeing, uh, kayaking, they too have a bison herd uh, as well as uh, fishing experiences and wonderful quaint little towns um, within the park um, for shopping, restaurants and boutiques, etc. Uh, Gimli is um, a tribute to the Icelandic settlers in uh, Manitoba. It's about an hour north of Winnipeg and they have Icelandic festivals as well. It's a great marina, great for sailing. Um, uh, and, and also cottage country and lakes and, um, and water activities. Falcon Lake is um, heading east of Winnipeg and also four seasons from, um, from skiing and tubing um, in the uh, winter months and hot tubbing to um, summer camping and fishing and kayaking and canoeing. It's offering guests the opportunity to, to still be outdoors and embracing the different seasons. Heckler is about a two-hour uh, drive north um, from Winnipeg, uh, also a tribute to the Icelandic uh, settlers in the province. And this is more of a resort town um, with some great hiking, um, as well as lighthouses and exploring trails. The, uh, the next uh, um, group of pictures um, is really just um, adding on to what we'd shared. The Viking, again, is a tribute. Uh, it's one of the statues out in Gimli, and it talks about the uh, Icelandic heritage. Uh, Caddy Lake um, in the, towards the east, and the White Shell um, for kayaking, canoeing, camping, and then we have the bison up in, uh, in Riding Mountain National Park. Some other unique Manitoba experiences that we have to offer, as mentioned, is Raw Almond, the pop-up restaurant on the frozen Assiniboine and Red Rivers, offering the five-course meals. Um, in February, January, February, we have the Mercedes uh, ice testing on the frozen Lake Winnipeg, um, which is the fresh, largest freshwater lake. Uh, Mercedes has actually, this last year was the first year that they um, offered this program where you can actually test drive the Mercedes out on the, the frozen waters. Um, we have Ganglers, which is a northern uh, fishing lodge, um, but is also uh, now turning into ecotourism. Um, they have fat bikes that you can take out on the trails. They have sand eskers, which you can go hiking on. They also have the opportunity to do some um, 
float plane rides around the area and check out some of the other lakes that are up in northern Manitoba. And it's very, uh, it's very unique and untouched Manitoba, not what you would expect. Um, we also have the Canadian Museum for Human Rights, which I mentioned is a life-altering uh, museum experience, and angling, fly fishing, ice fishing. Uh, we have the 63 fly-in lodges and 59 drive-to lodges. And of course, because we have so many bodies of water, um, it is a year-round experience, uh, so everybody seems to really take part in, um, in that particular activity. We have nine different um, Canadian signature experiences around the province. Um, so I'll briefly just touch on them. Um, we have the bird in the hand, which is uh, at Oak Hammock Marsh. Oak Hammock is um, about a 45 minute drive outside of Winnipeg. And here you can see a number um, of birds who migrate there. Right now we're, uh, we're getting into the Canadian geese migration. Um, it's a wetlands area. Uh, just outside of the province. As Melanie mentioned, we have the Prairie Legacy, the Bison and its people at Fort White Alive, and the Journey to Churchill at the Assiniboine Park Conservancy. Um, we have the uh, Churchill programs as well, the Al Ultimate Arctic Summer Adventure, which is offered through Lazy Bear Expeditions, and the Birds, Bears, and Belugas offered by Churchill Wild. Um, some of the other uh, Canadian signature experiences as well is the Polar Bears by Tundra Buggy with Frontiers North Adventures, the Best of the Arctic by, with Great Canadian Travel Company, uh, Pathways of the Voyageurs with Aiken's Wilderness Lodge, uh, and this is a fly-in lodge that you would go to, and then of course the Hermetic Code Tour of the Manitoba Legislature, which is offered by Heartland International Travel and Tours. We, um, we wanted to include a couple of sample itineraries um, for you just to see how easy it is to package up the different um, attractions and options. So just an, uh, uh, a sample self-drive um, itinerary could be an arrival into Winnipeg, exploring the city overnighting in Winnipeg, heading out to Riding Mountain the next, uh, the next morning. It's about a three and a half hour uh, drive west more than welcome to stop at a couple of craft breweries along the way and do some tastings. Um, overnighting in Riding Mountain, uh, the next day driving east through the um, Manitoba Narrows, which is just a really a gorgeous part of the, part of the province and the interlakes. Um, overnighting in Hecla, um, that's a four hour drive, and then uh, and back to Winnipeg the next day. So for four hours you literally could cover um, the west and northwest or north uh, part of the province. Those wanting more, you can absolutely add Falcon um, Lake or the eastern side of the province as well, and that would be an hour and a half to two hours drive um, going east. Um, a sample um, Churchill itinerary would be um, uh, arriving in Winnipeg, Again, spending the day in the city, either taking in journeys to Churchill to give you a bit of a sense of what you can experience up north, or um, maybe some time at the Manitoba Museum as well for uh, some of the cultural or history buffs in the group. Then uh, the next morning, heading up to north to Churchill. Overnights in Churchill could be anywhere from two to five nights, depending on the operator that you're staying with, the package that you're booking, um, and then um, heading back to Winnipeg and um, overnight. Um, and then um, for a sample Winnipeg itinerary, um, can easily spend three to five nights in the city exploring and visiting the many attractions, restaurants and festivals. Um, we touched on Journey to Churchill, we touched on the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. The Royal Canadian Mint is located in Winnipeg and this is where the majority of the coin currencies from around the world are manufactured um, here in Winnipeg. Um, Manitoba Museum, Oak Hammock Marsh, Fort White Alive, uh, the Forks where the two rivers meet here in Winnipeg. Um, we've had incredible experiences having guests go um, catfishing on the red. This is that really ugly fish that um, um, Cindy had referred to, but we have um, 
it's, it's a real fun day out on the water. Or um, uh, another organization is Twin River, and they, uh, they offer um, paddling or travel canoe experiences, including tenting as well, if they wanted to do that. So just a couple of itineraries just to show you how you can mix and match um, some of the itineraries. Uh, some booking tips that we have for you um, is it's always best to book with your preferred Australian wholesaler. Um, any additional questions that you have, we can certainly answer for you. Or you can also contact um, our GSA, Ray Lane, uh, with DC and Associates, and we will include that information in our follow-up as well. Um, another tip that we have is when you are booking for Churchill programs, it is best to book a year in advance. The um, Churchill does have limited capacity, so things do tend to fill up quite quickly. And always have an open mind when traveling to the north. Um, adventures can await at any moment when you're traveling north. So we'd like to thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day and listening to our presentation today. Yeah, and I think, uh, Charlie, it's, uh, it's back to you, and we're, uh, we're certainly available, and we'll stay on the line for any uh, questions that we can answer. And just a reminder that we certainly will follow up um, with an email providing, again, all the different um, um, operators and additional information you may require. And we can be as specific as you need. So let us know what you need, um, if it's images, if it's video, anything that we can help um, you understand our, our products and uh, our amazing province. And our amazing province, we'd, we'd love to do that. So we'll hand it back to you, Charlie. Thank you so much, ladies. It's absolutely fascinating. Um, what a wonderful province. Lovely to hear your passion for the province as well. Um, we have also had previous webinars with some of the companies you mentioned, okay. Frontiers North, Churchill Wild, and Lazy Bear Expeditions. So if anybody wants to watch those webinars in more detail, then feel free to ask me. I can send you those links as well. So yeah, because the, the polar bears are a pretty special experience, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. So the floor is open for questions. If anybody does have any questions, just type them into the chat box and I will I'll read them out. So um, Melanie and Cindy, so how long, if people are coming over to Winnipeg, you know, and they're, they're then jumping off to do a Churchill trip or something else, so how long do people normally stay in Winnipeg itself? We would, we would suggest making sure you have at least two days um, in Winnipeg um, before you head up to Churchill. Um, that would give you time to explore a couple of the options. And I would, I would definitely suggest you tack a day on at the end of your itinerary. Um, not so much for just exploring Winnipeg, but often the Churchill area um, can provide challenges in terms of weather. And um, sometimes you may be a bit delayed getting out of Churchill if there's really bad snow or blizzards or fog. Um, so we would suggest uh, making sure you give yourself a day on the other end, just you know, before booking long haul flights, um, long -haul flights back. Um, but definitely at least two or three days. Winnipeg is really um, a, a great kept secret. Um, it has incredible culinary experiences and um, festivals, music festivals, um, comedy festivals. We have the Winnipeg Symphony, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. Okay. So not just, you know, polar bears and belugas, but a lot of arts and culture. Oh, that's a great tip. Thank you. Yeah, those the pop up restaurants look absolutely fantastic as well. I was, I they was keen. are, and they're <laughs> only open for um, the one in Winnipeg is only open for two weeks, and it's two sittings a night. And in in Churchill, I think it's just also two weeks, two okay. sitting or ten days. Ten even. days. And they have two sittings as well. So, okay. so the waiting list to get in is the minute the booking opens, people are... It usually sells out within a couple of hours. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good to check what's going on then um, before getting mm -hmm. to heading to Winnipeg for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, no questions coming through, so we will sign off there. But thank you, ladies, uh, for joining us today. Um, we'll just hang on the lines if anybody does have any questions where you can hang back. But otherwise, everybody have a great day, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.